All right, we're going to look at the Scan Tech K Scan 20 today. Uh, first thing we're going to do is scan the transmission casing. We've already got our targets on here, so we're going to scan the targets first to basically pre lay out the targets, um, which will allow us to set a floor so we don't record anything below the bottom of the part, uh, but also optimize the volumetric accuracy by doing just kind of pre-planning out these targets. You go pretty quick. Okay. That's it. Alright, so now we're gonna stop this. Do a quick opti optimization. Uh, just to reduce any errors tack up and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select I've got a couple targets on the actual case I'm going to set up that background so essentially it is not going to record anything behind that background so now we've already got the targets laid out so now we're going to do the scanning to actually create the mesh so since we have the targets laid out already you don't have to be very careful about where you're scanning. If, if the scanner's in a loose position, you could even go from this side, jump over, and start scanning on this side without any issues. So you can be pretty, I don't know, carefree is the right word, but you don't have to think too much. So we're just kind of painting the object. Everything is seeing is recording. And we're recording about 250 points per second. We want to hit these surfaces from a bunch of different angles. Make sure we're getting some of these crevices. some of this when we flip the object over. Just making sure we have good coverage everywhere. Okay. That's probably good. Get that a little better. And we'll stop. Let me stop the scan right here. There's a little pre-process, and then this is what we have so far. So it looks pretty good. Uh, we want to do a second scan. So we'll flip this guy over and then we'll combine them, and then we'll, we'll finalize everything and mesh it together. So to add a second scan, we come up here to add, type pad, excuse me. Do the same thing where we'll Mark points first, which are the targets, just to kind of do a pre, pre scan of those again that reduces that volumetric accuracy. go very quick on this. All it's looking for is the target itself. So it's not really having a good time of processing real time, so you can do it very quickly. Alright. Stop on that. And we'll optimize. Set the floor. Floor, floor, floor. And then we'll jump back into the scanning. So we already scanned the mark mark points of the targets. Now we are adding the geometry to us. We're actually scanning the part. You can technically jump right into the scanning without 
tree scanning the targets themselves, but just from a practical standpoint, your data is going to be more accurate. It's going to make scanning a lot easier. It's easier on the computer. On the scanner, it's just it's not having to map out those targets while it's actually collecting geometry. So at the end of the day, it just makes everything a little, a little easier downstream. K-Scan 20, um, it's rated to 20 micron accuracy, which is about 8 in thousandths of an inch. So very accurate. Um, there is an error stack up over distance, which if you use the integrated photogrammetry that is built into the scanner, which I'm not going to show today, the error stack up is 35 micron per meter. So very tight. Okay. Now, if we look in the, these areas, I can push the scanner in, get a little deeper. If I want to get a lot deeper, I can change it into the single laser. Mode and it scans much deeper in those pockets. A lot easier. I could have probably come in here deeper just with all the, the normal scan mode, but then this is a good, good chance to show off the single laser. So it works pretty well, allows you to get much deeper in there. Um, single laser is great for just getting, getting in deeper pockets. All right, so we'll stop that there. Stop. Do a little pre-process again. And then at this point, we can look to see if we want to add anything. Um, it wasn't super thorough in these areas. So uh, at this point, I can just, if I want to add to it, just hit start, jump back into it. Just add some more data, just to be a little more thorough. Get those pores a little bit better. If we really want to get those pores better, we can switch into that single laser mode. We won't do that today. So we'll stop. Alright. What stops like that is doing a little bit of filtering of some noise. Uh, so this is that second scan. So if we want to combine these, we'll come over this first one. We'll make our reference. Right click, make our reference. Make the second one our test. Jump over to the points tab and do the splicing. Splicing in the scan type software is we're going to combine scan. So we'll just highlight the overlapping targets, click merge, say apply, and then it's align them. Just, just as fast as that. And the accuracy is less than a thousandth of a uh, What is that? 90 micron. So um, less than 4,000 is what our air stack up is here, the target alignment, is what it's saying. Okay, so it's gonna do, it's gonna merge those two together into one, and then we'll, the next step, we'll do one step to clean up the, the mesh to eliminate any floaters. Do this disconnected components, and it's gonna identify any floating noise we might 
have in here. Uh, this is the back of some of those, so we can delete those if we want. We can hit control if we want to keep that and delete the rest. Say so, okay, delete. Just to clean it up a little bit. Then we'll jump in. Wrap is the meshing step. Leave everything at the default and then let it crouch. So this will take just a couple minutes, actually fairly quick. We did we scanned uh, with the settings for one millimeter resolution, so you can go much uh, much higher res resolution to get finer details, but the scanning would take a little bit longer. The higher the resolution, the, low, the slower it's going to scan. So it just depends on the application. If you need higher resolutions, as you can see, even at one millimeter, um, you're getting very big details on even those holes. It's pretty clean data. We weren't super thorough in all the areas, but um, that was just a, a fairly quick scan. I think we're total all in about 10 minutes at this point. Uh, so from here, we are all done, and then we can just save and export. It's the right button, so save and export, just like that, STL or POI. Um, you can also save the point file, but um, majority of the time for reverse engineering, we're going to be looking at uh, mesh files. All right.